Firing people shouldn't be easy. It shouldn't be the, the step that you want to take immediately. They fire people right away without giving them a chance to really correct or improve their performance. The next meeting we're half, I'm not going to write you up. I'm going to write myself up. If you just cut away everyone when they make a mistake, that's not, you're not going to have a team in a little while. And we also see the opposite problem. Leaders that let things go for way too long. It's definitely difficult to fire people. How do you know when it's time to fire someone? This is obviously a super tough challenge that every leader has to deal with. You're going to have underperformers on your team, um, and that could be frustrating, and it's hard to know. Like, how much time should you actually spend with them? And we see leaders that get this wrong. They, they fire people right away without giving them a chance to really correct or improve their performance. And we also see the opposite problem where leaders that let things go for way too long, you got an underperformer that's dragging the whole team down and impacting the mission, uh, and you can't let that happen. So this is a tough challenge, and you got to find the balance. Like, when, 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 do you have, when do you mentor people, and when do you fire people? And we get all kinds of crazy answers with the first time that you think about it. I always laugh at that one because I think I would have had a job for two days, you know, for any job I ever had if someone fired me the first time they thought about it. Everyone's going to make mistakes. You don't want to just fire someone just because someone screwed up or had a misstep. Uh, it's a chance to actually train them and mentor them. But the answer to that question is the right time to fire them is when you actually don't feel bad about it. What I mean by you don't feel bad about it is not that you're cold-blooded and you don't care about taking someone's livelihood away and their ability to feed their family or pay their mortgage and pay their bills. What I mean is that you don't feel bad about it because you know it's the right thing. When you've done everything possible to train them, to mentor them, and to give, ev give them every opportunity to step up and improve their performance. And when they can't do that, you have to make the tough decision to let them go because you're putting the good of the team and the mission first. Yeah, it is definitely, it's definitely difficult to fire people, and it should be difficult. If you don't care when you take someone's ability to feed their family away from them, you're probably not the best person in the world. In fact, you might not be a good person at all. So there is a component of, of firing people that is very difficult to mitigate. Now, you can mitigate that somewhat. Obviously, you can give them some kind of a severance package if that's possible. The other thing you can do to mitigate that is, can you give them a good letter of recommendation in some other role, maybe at another company, maybe for their next job? That, that's realistic. Hey, they weren't ready for a management position, but you write them a letter of recommendation that they're a really hard worker and that they can make things happen. And, and so you can do things to mitigate that. And this is, of course, after you've already looked maybe in your company for some roles that an individual might be better for, because some people, they're just not capable of doing a, a particular role inside of an organization. And if you find someone like that and they tried to step into a role and they couldn't do it, move them to a different role, see how they do there. So these are all things that that we try to do to mitigate that. The other component that makes us feel bad when we fire someone is what you just talked about. If I'm going to fire someone and I know in my heart that I didn't do a good job being a leader, coaching, mentoring, training them, setting clear expectations, letting them know what was going on, I know if I didn't do those things, I'm also going to feel bad about firing someone. So what do we need to do on both those elements that make us feel bad about firing someone? We, we try and mitigate as much as we can on both sides. The one hand, which I already talked about, look, you try and move them if you can. If you can't, you try and give them a severance package of some sort. You try and give them a healthy amount of time notice so that they can try and find something else to do and strong letters of recommendations that you leave them with so they have a chance to get hired somewhere else. That's how you mitigate on that front. On the other front, what you do is you have to be a good leader. You have to go through the proper protocols, the escalation of counseling, which is making sure that I explain to them in the beginning, hey, is everything okay, Leif? I, I noticed you were late today. Is everything okay? That's where it starts out. I'm letting Leif know that you, that you were late and I noticed it. I'm also making sure that you're okay. Is there anything going on with your family? Is one of your kids sick? Why are you late? You know, Do you have a legitimate reason? That's where I start off, but then we've got to escalate that over time where in the end, when we're writing people up, look, people think writing someone up is punishing them. Well, it can lead to punishment, but an initial write-up should actually be a fair document that explains what the shortfalls are in very clear language 
and then explains what the corrective measures need to be, and then finally what the consequences will be if they don't correct their shortfalls. So by the time when I had to fire people, by the time I was firing them, in most cases, they knew that they were going to be fired. They, it was crystal clear that they had not met the needs that were required for their position and they were going to get fired. Now, one other tr- uh, thing that I've been advising people to do before I write someone up, I'm actually going to write myself up. I'm actually going to, the, the, the immediate meeting that I have, if Leif, if you work for me and you're, you've got some shortfalls, the first thing I'm going to do, well, obviously we're going to have some conversational counseling, then that might escalate. And now I'm getting a little bit more direct. And finally, I'm thinking about writing you up. The next meeting we're half, I'm not going to write you up. I'm going to write myself up. I'm going to put down, Hey, Leif, I need you to do a better job with your tasks. Here's some things that I don't think I've done yet. I'm not sure if I've given you the clear meaning behind your tasks. I'm not sure if I've given you good enough training. And I'm not sure that I'm giving you enough time to get these things done. Do you, is there anything else that I'm missing? And now we can have a conversation. And by the way, the last thing I'm going to say to you is, look, I just wrote myself up because I want you to be able to succeed. If you don't get better, if you don't improve, you will be getting written up next. And obviously me writing you up is the beginning track for possibly you not being here anymore. My goal is to keep you here. My goal is to have you continue to work here and improve your skills so you can get this job, get your job done. If you can't do that, you can't continue to work here. So that's where we're at. And if you go through these protocols, and listen, in every industry is different. Some industries, if you know, if if you work for me, Leif, and we're a you're a commission only salesperson, I might try counseling for you you for a year before I let you go. If we're in the construction industry and we're working a huge project, I might give you three or four days of counseling before I let you go because we simply can't fall short of the critical path and or bring someone else in. So this timeline is flexible, but the methodology of making sure that you escalate that counseling, that you figure out how to explain to people what their shortfalls are so they can correct them. And if they can't correct them, that is when it is time to let them go, move them to a different area, or perhaps just remove them from the organization completely. The goal of that counseling and the escalation of counseling is to help them improve, is to help them get better. In order to do that, you you have to you have to provide some some actual feedback to people as well. And I, th- I think people look at the SEAL teams and they think, well, look, we have combat experienced leaders and, you know, they're courageous on the battlefield. And so they're not going to back down from those tough conversations when it's time to actually tell someone that they're underperforming. But in the SEAL teams, this is generally what happens. You know, if you're the commanding officer and I'm the executive officer to SEAL team and we have one of our platoon commanders that is struggling to perform well, And we need them to step up their game or we don't have the confidence to actually deploy them overseas into a combat zone. And we say, hey, let's call them in. Let's have a conversation with them. So we're going to have that tough conversation. We're going to start the escalation of counseling. And oftentimes, what does that conversation sound like? We get them in the room. We shut the door. And it sounds like this. You're, You're doing a great job. You know, you're doing a great job overall. There's a couple things to, to work on. And so that person, the platoon commander who's struggling to perform, he leaves there thinking he's awesome. Why would he change? He doesn't even hear the couple of things he needs to work on. He just hears he's doing a great job. And so if you do that and you provide some false cheerleading to people and you're not actually talking to them about where they need to improve, they're never going to get better. And so then eventually that person gets fired and they're like, what the heck, man? I... You told me I was doing a great job. Now I'm getting fired. That doesn't make any sense to me. And that's a failure of leadership. And that's the thing that makes you feel bad about firing someone if you haven't actually had a tough conversation with them to help them get better, to to identify where their shortfalls are and where they actually need to improve. And I think that's where writing it down, as you said in in the escalation of counseling, that really helps. If you write that down and you, you've got a copy that you're going to give them, so now they have a reference they can take with them, it forces you to actually address those issues and you can't just paper over it when you're actually in person having a conversation with someone. Yeah. And this right there, what you just said, this is not a, a license to be a jerk to people. That's Sometimes people hear that, oh, well, you know, you got to have that hard conversation and they think, okay, cool. 
Leif's not performing the way I want him to do. I'm going to go and jump down his throat and humiliate him. It's like, no, it's called the escalation of counseling. It should start off with like, hey, Leif, I noticed you're having trouble with this project. What's happening? Is there anything I can do to help you? That's not an aggressive, hostile attack. That's not going to put you on the defensive. But it is going to give you an indication that, oh, Jocko's paying attention to what's happening and he sees that we're not, I'm not doing performing as well as I should. And maybe there are some things that you need. Is that not normal for someone in a subordinate position to maybe not have all the answers and maybe need some guidance? That's totally normal. So I start off with that conversational approach and an indirect approach to find out what's going on. What you have to do, and this is where it's critical, you can't stay indirect the whole time. You have to, as you escalate that counseling, you will escalate the directness. Then that's what you're talking about. Some of these, if I'm writing you up, that is a direct approach. That is a direct thing that I'm going to do. That's what's positive about it. When you, when you cross the line from verbal conversations to I'm going to sit alone in my office, I'm going to write up all the things that Leif is doing wrong, and now I'm going to hand it to you when, when you walk into the meeting. That's a very good way to make sure that you are clearly getting the points across and you're doing it in a constructive way. But if we fail to do that, if we never have those conversations where we delineate exactly what the problems are, we are not going to feel good when we fire them. And, and really, look, firing people shouldn't be easy. It shouldn't be the, the step that you want to take immediately because you've spent money and trained people to bring them on board, to train them, to get them up to speed. You've already invested in them. If you just cut away everyone when they make a mistake, that's not, you're not going to have a team in a little while. So think about what you're doing. Think about these protocols. Think about that escalation of counseling. By the way, you said hard conversation. The earlier you have a hard conversation, the easier it is. Is it ever easy to, is it ever make it easy when you have the final conversation with someone and you're letting them go? It's not going to be an easy conversation, but if you've done everything else, it's going to be as easy as possible. So think about those things. If you do a good job as a leader, as a mentor, as a trainer, as a human being, you're going to do a lot better figuring out when it is the moment to let someone go and it's going to be the right decision. How do I get someone else to take ownership? It's the question we hear most often at Echelon Front. What people think is like, well, but I wanted Leif to take ownership, and now I'm just taking even more ownership, and how does that actually work in the end? You want people on your team to step up and actually take the lead on things, take ownership of stuff. You're used to me telling you what to do. They don't see that as a lack of ownership themselves, right?